We've got a special episode for you today on the Got Out channel. That's where we live in the trailer for two years, me and the dogs. We've been traveling around the Western US, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, and we've been learning about nomad lifestyle. So I've been putting out these videos, see if I can give any advice to anybody else that's out there. Today, somebody sent us some of their beans, their coffee beans. So this guy, he roasts his own beans at home. And uh, he's got a channel on YouTube. And he sent me three packs of his beans that he roasted himself. And I'm gonna try them. I thought this would be a good time to show you guys how I roast coffee when I'm outdoors. This little kit right here is a, it's a little burner and you put little put some gas in here. So you just go like that, just fill up a little bit there. So we put, put a little bit of fuel in there and that goes into this right here. Now let's give it a light. Yeah, it's lit. It was hard to tell, but that's totally lit up. So those little holes, eventually flame is gonna come out these little holes around the rim there. Oh yeah, it's getting really hot. This is a cool little device for backpacking. And then right here, I just put my pot on top. So now we're cooking. And uh, here's a tip, a Nomad tip. If you need to carry water, you get one of these uh, gallon jugs of iced tea, Arizona iced tea, and it's a really heavy duty container. It's better than the gallon jugs of water that you get. There we go. I'm gonna bring this up to a boil for our coffee. This water's been filtered, but um, I don't consider it necessarily safe to drink. I, I like to boil it. So you get this jug and then you got a nice container for carrying a gallon of water around. Okay, let's check out these beans. So this guy, Jimmy's Roast on YouTube. I'll put a link to his channel down there. But he apparently roasts these beans at home. He's got videos where he's roasting. He shows you how to roast them. And he sent me three different varieties. And these ones, you can see almost like a little bit of caramelization on them. So these might be good. I like my coffee kind of dark. You can see the flame in there. There we go. It's starting to boil here. So now I need to grind the beans. I got this coffee grinder here. I've really stepped up my game with coffee. And I actually grind my own beans now. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this in here. This is the Kenya Organic Muisi Estate, Kiambu County. Which, I don't know what that means, but it sounds African anyway. Set this on two. Grind it up. Okay, let's just give it a smell. It smells good. It, it smells sweet. This is the stuff that I used to use. Instant coffee. And I swear, this stuff isn't that bad. You can make it really dark. You just kind of double up. Add twice as much. And you can do it with cold water. You don't need hot water. So it's actually pretty convenient. If you want cold coffee, you might as well just do this. But, um, you know, it doesn't have the flavor or all the nutrients, I guess, that, that fresh beans is going to have. So doing it this way, and the coffee does taste really good. I got a tip here about coffee filters. I'm using this pour over, which this thing works really well. But it requires uh, number two cone filters. And they're more expensive. But if you get the, what is this, basket four cup, one to four cup. These are super cheap. There's 200 in here for like two bucks. And uh, you just have to fold them to get them to stick in there. What I do is you take it inside out and then fold it in half like that. 
not in half, but you fold it so there's like a little cone. And you just jam that right in there, and that works really good. It's a lot cheaper. And uh, Walmart was actually out because I'm in Quartet right now, so a lot of people out here do uh, pour overs. I'm having a wind issue. This is not going to work. Shoot. Okay. There we go. Okay, so now it's time to add the, the water. It's just starting to boil. You happy dog, Echo? It's boring when I make coffee, huh? Now I'm gonna grind up this Ethiopia organic Shantoween GI Sadamo. I have no idea what this means, but here's what the beans look like. Again, these are Jimmy's roast beans. So he he hand roasts these, and you can see on his channel he's he's roasting beans at home, just using like regular equipment that you'd have in your kitchen. Basically, he just does them right in his kitchen, or he does it outside on the grill. It's pretty interesting, you know? It's something, honestly, I'm never gonna roast my own coffee because I'm not that much of a, like, I'm not that much of a coffee snob, but I guess I'm kind of getting there because I got the the filters and the, the pour over. I also have a, I also have the French press. Okay, I gotta try to get about the same amount of beans. And I'm just doing real small Real small amount. Okay, so this is the Ethiopia. One thing, Jimmy, if you could write the name a little bit lower on the bag so I can actually reseal it and still be able to read it. Because what happens is I, I roll this over to seal it and then I can't read it. So <laughs> let's grind up the Ethiopia beans here. Set that on two. So usually for a cup of coffee, I fill this up completely with beans and then when they, it's ground out, it'll be about half full in the jar. And that's good for a cup, cup and a half of coffee. This is all the stuff that I use. You can get all this stuff on Amazon. So I'll have affiliate links for these products, this stuff. And of course the coffee, you know, you're gonna have to go to Jimmy's channel yourself and just see how to do it. He shows you where to buy the coffee and everything too. Okay, so this is the Ethiopia. I'm gonna try to just stick this in this cup for now. And I'll try to do the pour overs like one right after another. So that's the Ethiopia, okay. Got to remember this. And then here, this is my main coffee mug for backpacking and everything. I, lo I love this mug. It actually works really well. It's got measurements on here. So this is my only measurement cup in the trailer that I use. And it has this awesome little feature where this little hole right here, it turns into a bellows for a, for a campfire. You got a little bellows, a little air comes out right here. It's kind of a little trick. So this insulates it. I like that thing a lot. Okay, so for our third and final Jimmy's Roast, Dominican Republic Organic Ramirez Pea Berry. You know, oh, these do look kind of different. They're kind of plump. They actually, it doesn't smell very good. That one, the other two smell more like coffee. This one smells kind of, I don't know, kind of woody. So we'll see how that translates into the flavor. Okay.
And my water's done boiling over there. Yeah. It smells kind of... Kind of like sawdust. And dirt, sort of. Let's see if I can pour these with one hand here. So this is the first one. The Kenya, I think. And there's a specific way to pour this, but I'm just trying to get the flavor. So I'm gonna to try to give them about the same amount of water. Let that pour in there. So this is the pour over that I use. It's ceramic. It does work really well. I worry about it breaking because we're traveling a lot and it could rattle around. So I try to wrap it up in the trailer. There's other ones, there's like metal ones. So I'm thinking about getting a metal one to try that out. Now let's do the Ethiopia. There's what the grounds look like. It's the Ethiopia organic something, GI Sadamo something. So Ethiopia, so we'll call this one the Ethiopia and then the next one is going to be the Dominican Republic. And the first one is Kenya. All right, let's do the Dominican Republic. Pea berry. This is the one that had that weird look. It kind of looked like, I guess, peas. And it must be why they call it pea berry kind of more plump, more round than a coffee bean is usually. Like I said, there is a specific way you're supposed to do the pour over, but I'm kind of foregoing that. You know, you're supposed to pour, put a little bit of water in, let the grounds rest for a few seconds, and then continue the pour over. Okay, so I did take a couple seconds to kind of rearrange here. And these have sat a little bit, but uh, let's give them a shot. I, I don't really know how to do this tasting. Supposedly, there's gonna be a Jimmy's Roast video that shows you how to do what's called cupping, which I guess is kind of what I'm doing here, where you sample all the different flavors. Now it looks like this one, I used a little bit more water than the others, so it could be a little weaker, so I'll not hold that against it. These first two used about the same amount of water. And you know, these are all different cups too, right? Like I have a ceramic cup here for this one. This one's metal. And then I got this plastic one. So I don't think that's a really fair way to test the coffee, but hey, you know, I'm pretty limited. Like I only have one fork and one spoon and it's actually the same thing, it's a spork. That's just how I do things out here. I really try to be minimalist. And uh, these are all the three cups that I have. So this is the best way I could do it. So I'm gonna give this Kenya one a shot. Again, this is Jimmy's roast, home roast. He buys the beans raw and then he roasts them at home. This is the Kenya. Okay, first, first flavor is really good. There's kind of a weird tinge to it. But it's pretty good. I like it. It's kind of it's kind of rich. It has kind of a, a weird or an unusual an unusual after flavor. Okay, this is the organic, is this is Ethiopian, I think. This is the Ethiopian organic coffee. Okay, it doesn't really smell strong. This is fun. I hope Jimmy sends me some more of his roast. I like dark, really dark coffee, not too dark, but a little bit of burnt chocolatey flavor in there. This one's smoother. It's kind of woody. 
it's kind of sweet, caramely. I'd say I like this one better than the first one so far. Okay, now this is the pea berry. Dominican Republic pea berry. It smells, it doesn't smell strong at all. Oh, now this one's still pretty warm. This is the one I poured last, but um, see, it's got this insulator on here. It's still, um, it's still kind of hot almost. Okay, now it's definitely weaker, but like I said, I put more water in there. It does kind of taste darker, even though it's a little weaker because there's more water. But it has more of that darker kind of roast. And I kind of wonder, maybe I'm just used to um, coffees from the Dominican Republic. You know, I get Starbucks a lot. Mostly is what I get. I get um, I get a lot of my coffee from Costco. I get two, two and a half pound bags. It's a lot cheaper. I think the Dominican Republic one is my favorite so far. Now I'm going to go through. I'm going to do... All th I'm going to do a sip of all three. You know, none of these are real strong flavored. I got that aftertaste from that first one. The second one is smoother. It's smooth, simple, kind of sweet, not super... What's the word I'm looking for? It's not super... It's not really special, but that's this one's better than that one. And this one, the way I made it, it's a little bit weak. It's kind of like hotel coffee. Okay, yeah, the Dominican Republic, it has that uh, darker, kind of a little bit of chocolatey in there. I'm going backwards now. Yeah, it's real mild. It's just not super special. It's good. There's nothing off about it. It's a good one. I would make that one stronger and it would probably make it a lot better. It's probably just, I need to maybe less water or more grounds or something. Yeah, th this one still has that kind of weird aftertaste, kind of a tangy, tingy, like licking the bottom of a Hot Wheels car. The first, the front flavor, the first flavor you get is real pretty good, but then you get that, um, that met metallic taste at the end of it. It's not bad. It's just, um, I wouldn't buy that one. So that's the Kenya one. I'm going to say that's my least favorite, and the Ethiopia one, I'm going to say is my second favorite, my middle, and uh, my favorite's going to be this Dominican Republic. Even though I made it weak, yeah, that's mostly what I'm used to drinking. It's kind of dark, chocolatey, smooth. It doesn't have an aftertaste. It's kind of smooth all the way through. That's a lot of fun. Jimmy, thanks for sending me your roasts. And uh, everybody watching the Got Out channel, hit the thumbs up for us, me and the dogs. We're out here learning about nomad life. And if you want to learn about nomad life, keep watching us. And uh, you, know, you can subscribe and see all of our videos. We put out videos one or two times a week. Sometimes more than that if I can. And uh, check out the Jimmy's Roast channel for uh, information on how to roast your own beans. You can do it at home. Um, and you could do it if you're a nomad on a tra in the trailer. You could do it on the, on the stove. You could do it out on the campfire. I think he's going to do one where he does it on a fire. 
So he, he'll show you how to do it. I don't think I'm ever gonna do that because I'm not that much of a coffee snob. I just buy my beans already roasted and then I grind them up and do the pour over. And I like it. I like doing it that way. It's simpler for me. I don't need to roast my own beans, but if you want to roast them, check out Jimmy's roast channel. It's, it's pretty cool. This little stove worked out really well. I got this flat rock here. And uh, you know, there's an old fire pit right here. So this will, you know, be safe in case I have a spillage or anything like that. Because I mean, anything out here will burn out here in the desert really quickly. So I'll try to be safe. But this kit, it comes with, let's see, what's it called? Alcos. I'll put a link to this, like I said, an affiliate link so you can get this on Amazon. It's real inexpensive and uh, it's lightweight. It's, it's light enough to take backpacking for sure. You have to bring fuel though. You can use uh, rubbing alcohol. Um, supposedly this is the best stuff to use. It's a little expensive, but I like using this. It does work pretty well. This is what is heavy. If you're going to backpack, then the fuel is what's the most heavy. If you're going to use a liquid fuel stove like this. So this is the container here, and then it comes with this burner. So you just put the thing in there, and then you fill up. You want to go about halfway at least, full. And then you just light it and it'll catch right away. You let it sit a little bit and then eventually the flame will start coming up these little holes here. And then you set your pot on top and then now you're cooking with gas. It comes with this little lid here and this thing slides like that. So you can adjust the flame if you want, like half as much flame to come out, that kind of thing. You can just go like that. Um, but then this is the snuffer. So you snuff it out like that, and then you can let it cool. And you put this lid on with this ring. It comes with this ring, which goes in here in the lid. And then once you put the lid on, you gotta take this off. You put the lid on, and then that'll keep the fuel in there. And keep the fuel in there once you screw that on. And then now you can carry this around and supposedly the fuel doesn't leak out. And so you can retain your, your fuel inside the stove. And then that all packs together. This ring would be in there. I just didn't do it because I only have one hand right now. But then this, this goes on top and then that's your whole stove kit. I like this stove a lot. It works really well. I have another stove I'll show. Actually, I've shown it in one of my other videos. And this other stove, it uses sticks so you just pick up twigs like there there's my fuel right there so you just pick up these twigs off the ground you don't have to cut anything and you just stick them in in there and uh it'll create an actual flame like a little mini campfire and that cooks really well too i like using that for backpacking because it's that's the super lightweight you don't have to carry any fuel with you you just use sticks and twigs and pine cones that you find on the ground so you can check out my other videos to see about that stove i'll show it again in some future videos Let's check out what Mr. Echo did while I was <laughs> while I was doing the coffee, showing you guys Jimmy's roast. Mr. Echo dug this awesome huge hole right here. He's under the tree. This is pretty cool. He's been doing really good off leash. There's not too many animals running around here. Well, there he goes right now. <laughs> Shoot, <laughs> there's some birds running around over there. He'll chase a rabbit every now and then. He's just checking it out because he hears a disturbance. So he's wondering what's going on. Mr. Echo. He's a good dog.